I am the CEO of Contracts and Grants, and the Road to Government Contracts is the course line that we have that you are getting this course from today. Uh, we also have a fast track training program, and that is for people who are looking to get into the government space and they need step by step instructions of exactly how to do that. I am also the founder of the App Diva, and I have a podcast called Beyond the Brand. And Beyond the Brand is basically a podcast about the entrepreneur journey, not from an educational perspective. I think there's so many people giving, you know, workshops about being an entrepreneur and, and things of that nature. But this is about, you know, those things that people don't necessarily, you know, want to talk about in terms of being an entrepreneur the good things the bad things the the frustrating things just the journey it's not always a pretty journey um and so we talk to people about various things uh tribulations trials um and those things that get them through it so it's a nice little podcast so if you get a chance please feel free to subscribe all right and then these are all my brands um contracts and grants is our flagship company and it's where we started over 22 years ago and um, we have over the course of the company been responsible for 12.2 billion dollars in contracts awards and negotiations um, which means we've gotten pretty good at knowing how to win government contracts there are some common denominators among failures there are some common denominators among uh, successes so we've kind of packaged it all together and come up with a variety of brands that help us grow businesses through contracts and grants, technology, and e-learning. Uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about is our uh, contracts and grants online brand, which is a free membership community. Um, for existing and emerging government contractors. And it's just a portal where we have templates and various information that you need uh, to kind of help you along your journey in the government contracts war, uh, arena. We, it's also where you'll see a listing of our events um, that are for members. Some are members only, others are open to the public. We have recently just launched PARS. And PARS is our performance assessment rating system. If you haven't already, Ali will be sending you a link. And that link will ask you about 15 questions. It takes about 20 minutes, oh, excuse me, about five minutes, if that. And those, the answers are tabulated, baited on a weighted value system. So even though the questions in and of themselves just kind of seem like basic questions, in the background, they're being weighted so that you're going to be given a score. And that score is to prime contractors what your credit score is to lenders. It simply says, based on this score, there's, an, there's a reasonable amount of expectation that this person will or will not successfully perform. Um, so if you score one to two, that means you've got those things that a prime contractor is looking for. Uh, we rate in three areas. Those areas are technical capability, meaning, you know, how well do you know what you know? The other one is teaming uh, capability or teaming capacity, and that is what do you bring to the table? And the other one is government suitability. Government suitability are those areas that the government would specifically, um, uh, um, or, or specific to government contracts, things like facility clearances, um, things like a DCAA audited accounting system. And so people who are in the government arena tend to have those things. So when someone is looking to subcontract to a uh, potential um, teaming partner, those are the things that they look for, but there, up until now, there was really no way for anyone to measure that without having a meeting or reading over, you know, the, uh, the quals. And after two or three companies, it all just kind of gets jumbled together. So we came up with this proprietary tool to, um, to kind of help prime contractors identify those people that they're looking for. Uh, but also for subcontractors and potential subcontractors, it gives us a way to let you know what it is that you need to get to a one or a two. 
Uh, many people say, hey, I have this business and um, I do this, but do you think I would do well in government contracts? Well, we take them through the performance assessment rating system. And then at that point, uh, it gives us a score. And we know based on that score where they need help. So those are the things that uh, I'm most excited about now um, because it allows us to help businesses identify their weaknesses. Once you've been rated, we put you over into the 10, which is the Teaming Exchange Network. And the Teaming Exchange Network is just a database where all of the matchmaking is going on. So, you know, you might be a four, but because you rated particularly well in a particular area, a number one might need that and say, hey, you know what? I wanna be matched up with this company because even though they don't have a strong government suitability score, they do have a good score in relationships. And so I need someone who has relationships because I have the infrastructure. I have the government suitability. I have everything I need. I just don't have the right relationships. So the system would automatically match you based on what that person says is the most important thing to them. And finally is our CNG Federal. CNG Federal is our federal services arm. And that is the arm that we use to go after contracts ourselves. Um, the last 22 years, we've been doing it and showing other people how to do it. So what we decided that we would do is go after the contracts ourselves and start teaming with some of the businesses that we are helping to grow, as well as partnering with some of our existing clients. So we um, um, have been doing it for others. And um, so we decided to do it for ourselves. And now we are in positions to be able to team people that we groom to become um, federal government contractors. So that's kind of enough about uh, me and um, you know what I do and who I am. I'd like to talk a little bit more or, or find out a little bit more about you guys. So I am going to unmute and I am going to ask Gloria, if you would, Please just give us a little information about you. And um, they can hear me on this computer. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Go ahead, okay. Gloria. Yes, uh, I'm Gloria. Uh, I own a real estate business since 1989, and uh, mostly I do uh, property management and sales. But uh, the business is getting a little slow. And, oh, okay. Uh, and I used to work for VA for the Veteran Affairs, handling their foreclosures. And I worked for uh, Fannie Mae, and I worked for F uh, Freddie Mac. But that's been some years ago, so I okay. wanted to get back. And very good. Very yes, good. very good. So then you are you are aware of all the opportunities that are in the government space. So you're getting back mm -hmm. over. So glad to have you. Thank you so much for joining uh, us. All right. Okay, Denise. Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Hi. How are you? It's actually Denise from me. Um, okay, Denise. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not in real estate yet. I'm starting to uh, study for my um, my license. <laughs> sure. Yes. You can. Um, sorry. I'm sitting in Starbucks. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> um, I uh, I'm a writer. Um, I'm a ghost writer, and I help people to write their books and their blogs okay. and to build their brand um, that way. But okay. um, I, you know, I've been looking for another line of income. Okay. Um, real estate is a great, uh, great thing that's, you know, it gives me flexibility or I get to maintain my flexibility. Um, okay. So, you know, there's so many different avenues that you can go through with real estate to build your wealth. And okay. uh, when I saw your, um, your information online, I was like, what? The company buys properties? Let me find out. So to me, it's right. like, you know, if, if, if I can learn this and, you know, just devote a couple of hours a day, you know, to that it, correct. it's correct. Boom. That is, that is done. correct. Done and done. Great. 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 Well, thank you so much for sharing. All right. Uh, Miss Appleby. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. Um, yes, my first name is Legalia. But what I do, I have a company, and the name of the company is Real Estate Works For You. And what we do is we specialize in property tax reductions for commercial and residential clients 
throughout the state of Georgia, but I'm interested in expanding and uh, getting into government contracting. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, you guys have all come to the right place. Uh, so we're gonna jump right in. Um, Allie, if you will text over the link, um, I'm going to send you a link uh, to, to click on. Um, and you can follow along with me, or if you want to look at my screen now and and do it later, I'll make sure you get the link. But it is it's it's where all of the contracts and and where you're going to go to find out where all of the opportunities are. Um, so I want to make sure that if you want to follow along, you can, or if you want to, um, uh, you know, if you want to. Um, you know, just, you know, watch it or, or follow along later or it's up to you, but I, I want, I would sort of want you to, you know, at least walk through uh, so that I can answer any questions that you have. For now, I've muted everyone just so that the background noise um, won't interfere with, with the conversation. Uh, but what I will do is I will periodically ask for questions and then I'll unmute so that we have the opportunity to uh, to address those questions. So if you'll just maybe jot them down as we're going along, when we have those question sessions, I mean, those uh, those opportunity for questions, I'll be able to address them. So the name of the um, site is findrfp.com, and you have the link there. So this is where, um, let me just kind of show you what it looks like when you first um, go on. There is a little red button that says free trial. I urge you to take advantage of that. I think I, I think I have the the highest package, and I think it might be nineteen dollars a month or something. But it gives me all of the opportunities um, for all the states and federal. So I mean, it's definitely worth the dollars. There's some very expensive ones out there, um, but then at the same time, you know, why not have something that's you know affordable and still gives you the information? I think in a lot of cases, it will you will find a link and it will click and take you um to another site but for for the money i think it's great um all right so I, I i did a search on property management so as you can see property management is um you know there's a lot of opportunities there for property so it gives you the opportunities uh, and what you do is you'll click. It even lets you do it by state. So I don't know what state you guys are in, but um, and each opportunity is going to have its own set of criteria and restrictions. And uh, for example, I know with the federal government, you're not always required to be licensed in the state if it's a federal property, because as long as you have a license for the state, um, that you reside in or not necessarily reside in, but if you have a license, um, it can be used for federal opportunities. State are going to be state by state. So um, that just kind of gives you an overview of the flexibility that you can have with federal, federal opportunities. Um, so here's some, um, I think here's property management. Um, this one particular one, uh, this particular one is in Indiana. Um, and it basically is with the housing authority on um, there. It gives you all the information about the opportunity. So whenever you are looking to decide and we call it building a pipeline, a pipeline is when you, let's just say you find 10 of these opportunities, you're clicking and clicking and clicking. What you do is you will take this. I, what I normally do is I'll have a, a spreadsheet. And I will cut and paste those opportunities in that spreadsheet. And I will just get a bunch of them. And I'll cut and paste. And then after I've got a, about 20, 25, then I'll go back through and I'll vet them based on a specific set of criteria. It might be based on when it's due. It might be due uh, based on the, the, the scope of work. 
but you want to have a, a pipeline and you want to have a pipeline. I say have about 25 opportunities in your pipeline, but they should be over uh, a period of time, you know, maybe 25 opportunities spread over maybe 90 days so that you don't, you know, don't, um, you know, get too much on your hands, but at the same time, pick those that are very, very uh, similar to what it is that you're looking to do. And uh, we actually, in our fast track class, we talk about how to vet opportunities and how you should weight the criteria and how you should do those things that make you say, hey, you know what, how do I whittle this list down from 25 to five or from 50 to 25? So, but today I wanted to make sure that you knew where to go to find the opportunities and what it is that you could expect. Um, that was for property management. Let's, let's look at um, uh, real estate leasing. Let's see what real estate leasing. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, my goodness. There's quite a bit of um, real estate leasing. Um, let's see what else did I put. Um, uh, office space. Yep, there's a bunch of office space at the federal. You can see that. Okay. Um, this let's look at a federal one. These are all state states. Here's one in Georgia. Let's click on Georgia and see what that one says. Okay. And here it says Wow, there it is right there. Where they want it, the number of square feet, the type of space, and the term. And then it goes on to tell you how to make an offer. And that's going to be pretty standard across the board with federal opportunities. So I am going to take time now and I'm going to un unmute everyone to see if there are any questions. Any questions anyone have so far? Is there a way that you can sort that by state? Yes, yes, at the top. At the top, that right here, it says, um, let's see, let's say we could do... I can, I think I said uh, office space. space. And then right here, you see that button right there? You just tell it which state it is that you want. Okay. Gotcha. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we go to the next section? No. So again, just to recap, um, this is where you're going to go to get all of your information about the opportunities that are available. You can use a variety of search words. Maybe you want to make it specific to something. I mean, some people only want to look at certain square footage or, or whatever. So use all of your search words. So come up with some really good ones. Because I know sometimes it might be hid under something else. Maybe property management might have also some lease things in it. Um, I think it's also a great idea for you to look at maybe teaming with companies that do maybe some small renovations or light renovations um, in the event that you are in the property management area of the business. Uh, there's all types of ways that you can uh, team with people to create a um, uh, one-stop shop type of opportunity uh, or, or contract, especially with HUD. HUD does a lot of that. HUD does a lot of property management and HUD also does a lot of um, what they call it. They don't call it um, moving. I think, I, don't, I forget what they call it, but it's relocation. That's what they call it. Property relocation. So, um, so you know, make sure you, you use those words as well. All right. So that's where the opportunities are. All right. So now there is also an entire website that is dedicated 
to public building services. So GSA, which stands for General Services Administration, and GSA is like the purchasing department for all the government agencies. So they have a division specifically for public building services. And of course, under public building services are a variety of activities, but this is where you're going to find, and it shows you up here, real estate. That one section is dedicated to real estate. And Ali is gonna make sure that you get those links. So you can have, you can spend an entire day in one area uh but they gsa is pretty much the agency that is going to represent all of the government agency's real estate needs as it relates to the types of services that you are going to be offering um so you've got real estate there you've got facilities management you've got gsa properties um they got a courthouse program regional buildings renting gsa property um, historic preservation, then they've got real estate services, um, leasing policy and procedure, um, real property disposal, rental policy and procedures, everything that you're going to need to learn what you need to learn to do business with the government or to take advantage of some of these opportunities is going to be on this website. So make sure that you spend some time reading this. And then what you want to do is you want to, you know, just kind of dip your toe in there. Just, you know, take your toe and say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to bid on one to see what happens. I'm going to just bid one, fill out the paperwork, because fortunately, a lot of the paperwork that is for real estate services is a lot less than your average proposals. Most proposals are huge. They're big. They're cumbersome. Uh, but a lot of the real estate um, paperwork or the bids for um, for the real estate are, you know, simply quotes or, you know, maybe a page of them, you know, they are asking you some questions and you respond because there's not a lot, you know, that you can do differently um, than someone else in terms of having to do a full scale proposal. So I think that, you know, based on the way the uh, solicitations are written or the quotes are written, you could probably, you know, do quite a few in a day's time or if you set aside some, you know, two hours a day or if you set aside an entire day of the week to focus on uh, real estate uh, opportunities with the government. So it's up to you how you kind of put it into your uh, timetable. But I, I really do think that it would be very, very well worth your while. So you've got where to go to get the information that you need, and then where to go to actually find the opportunities that you would want to bid on. Um, I'm gonna stop there before I go to the next section. Okay. Any, any questions on the public public buildings um, section? No. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm clear. So you find opportunities on findrfp.com as well as gsa.gov. Right. gsa.gov is going to be more informational as it relates to what you need to know about the government as it relates to real estate, their policies, their procedures. So you want to read that to get your information. The opportunities are going to be on Find RFP uh, because the government is required. Uh, there's another site, and that is fbo.gov, and I'll go to that site right now. Um, fbo.gov is, by law, every single opportunity that the government is buying or every opportunity, basically, and anything that the government is buying, it must, by law, be listed on Fed Biz Ops. The other one I gave you as the main one for, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is FBO.gov is specific to the federal government. The other site gives you state and local and federal. And it's a little easier to search. I find that you know, with Fed Biz Ops, if you if you misspell one word or if you, you know, put the space in the wrong place, it doesn't, it leaves out a lot of information. So usually I go to find RFP 
look it up, and then it'll take me to FedBiz Ops, and the information is all there. So that's why. But FedBiz, uh, uh, FedBiz Ops, FBO.gov, is the official government portal for all opportunities. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Now, we are going to move on to Sam. And Sam is the one place that you must be registered in before you can submit an opportunity or a bid or sources sought or request for information. So I urge you to go ahead and get started and make sure you use the link that we send you because a lot of times people will Google it and they're those companies out there that make it sound like they're the government, but they're not, and they charge you, and there's no fee whatsoever associated with getting reg registered for SAM, and it stands for System for Award Management, but there's a lot of companies out there that, you know, use a similar name, and, and next thing you know, you're, you're signing up for with them to do it instead of it, and it's just information about your company, and it asks you, like, number of employees, um, it takes about three days for them to get you back your code, and your cage code is your government ID, so to speak. Uh, it takes about three days, but uh, it takes about maybe give yourself a couple of hours. Um, and 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 I say that because I'm kind of familiar with it. But there's a lot of things you need to read as it relates to clauses. Um, so you know when you get time, if you can't do it all at once, you know maybe do a section per. Per, per day, but it's really information that the government uses to store. So when you are awarded a contract, they know that all of your information is accurate. So it asks you, you know, things like uh, revenue, number of employees, um, which services that you are, are offering, and it will give you a list, which brings me to your NAICS code. Everything in the government space is NAICS code specific. So your NAICS code is, and I'll pull that up and I'll have Ali send you that as well. And make sure you use this one too, because there's a lot of people out there that are um, perpetrating. So uh, let's see, let's put in real estate. Okay. There, there are quite a few um, for real estate. So you would decide which one of these, or you can have multiple. You can have, you know, 20 next codes assigned to your account. So before you actually start completing your uh, SAM, go out to this site and complete your next code lookup to decide which ones. And the reason that is important is because people will go out to Sam and they will look by next code. They might say, I'm looking to team with someone who has this next code in Georgia. So if your next code comes up, then of course that you're going to be on their list. We also use it as part of our performance assessment rating system as well. So when clients call us looking for companies um, that have a particular next code or um, do a particular type of work, then that's what we use. It's an identifier or a commodity service identifier. Okay. So I am going to, you guys are really in short class. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm going to go out and see what we can find on, on FBO. Okay. You see here, as, as you can see here, they got all kind of stuff under real estate construction. I just don't like this search feature. I really do prefer find RFP. Let me see what we got. For real estate. All right, here we go. 
Uh, okay, well, there isn't anything federal. Uh, they've got real estate appraisal services in Washington, a lot of appraisal services. Um, let's see, lease. Oh, here's a bunch of federal. Okay, let's take a look at one of these. We don't want anything in our rack. Um, okay, let's do this. Okay, let's look at a federal office space. I think this is the one that we looked at. All right, we looked at this one. Let's look at another one. Um, um, okay, let's just say, let's, let's see what's going on in Missouri. Okay. We've got, it gives you the city, gives you the square footed, it gives you the term. And then there's some very, and there's also some additional requirements. Um, and they're always going to be there. And then they talk about must meet government requirements for fire safety accessibility. Now, in this case, it's got some very specific requirements as it relates to seismic and sustainability standards. Now, I don't know what that is. That may be something very standard in your industry. I don't know. Uh, that's where you would come in. If we were helping you with this particular bid, we would do, um, we would have a kickoff and we would sit down with your technical lead who would probably be you. And the technical lead is the person who knows about the technical requirements of the bid. And so the technical requirements of the bid are those things that I would ask you like, oh, is that standard? What is that? Um, you know, what is the fire safety? What are those things? And then if you didn't know those things, then you'd go and probably to gsa.gov or sometimes in the solicitation itself, it will list the clause or the piece of information that you can, the regulation that you can go to and find out exactly what those standards are. Now, here's where it tells you exactly where to send your information and what it should include. Um, tells you exactly, should include the following. And then it talks about the standards, RFP8 seismic standards. Um, and we're gonna click on that to see exactly what that is. All right, there it is. It even gives you the standards. And apparently NIST has some very specific standards about what that should be. So typically with federal government contracts, and the reason that I love the federal government space is because generally they are going to give you everything you need to be successful. Everybody gets access to the exact same information and everybody has to ask questions a certain way and even though you might ask the questions, everybody's going to get the answers. So I love federal government contracting because it is so much more transparent than state and local. Uh, sometimes state and local is, you know you, you know, you might win, but you don't know why you won because they don't do evaluation factors. You know, the federal government, they tell you how they're going to evaluate the proposal long before uh, you even submit it. So if they tell you that they're going to, evaluate your bid based on you know price then you know you know that you've got to come in at a good price if it's based on technical ability then you know you got to write a really really strong proposal so that's why i like the federal government space but in your industry um you know it's probably pretty cut and dry i mean there's you know it is what it is uh the rate is the rate um but if that's not the case and there's some discriminators are some distinguishing factors between your you know how you operate your shop 
then that's where you would talk about what makes you different, even though maybe your price is higher, your, your square footage price is higher, but maybe it includes a certain level of maintenance or oversight. Um, so that's when you start getting into proposal writing. But for the most part, it's just going to be how you do your normal listings. So that pretty much, um, that pretty much, you know, sums up what the information uh, portion that I had to share with you today. Um, let me see if I'm going to unmute you guys. And so we have time for questions. $20,000. Questions so far? Well, not so far, but this is, you have all the information. Now, I know what usually happens is, you know, <laughs> you take the information and you go and you digest it. And then you go back and you come back and you might say, hey, you know what? So I'll have a follow-up and it, it will be at no cost. Uh, I will have a follow-up session um, probably in a couple of weeks where you got you guys went out. You know, you did some searches, you found some things, maybe you had some questions or, or maybe a, a few things started coming up that you did not understand or the same things kept coming up that you didn't understand. Um, so that might be a better um, uh, um, session for you to be able to, because right now you don't know what you don't know. You know where the opportunities are you know what you need to do in order to bid on them and you know um you you know how to find out what your com commodity code is which is what you're going to sell to the government so with that information hopefully you guys will be able to uh go back and find some opportunities and um you know, come back with some questions. I'd be glad to take any now, but if you need to wait, um, I'll be more than happy to have another session to address those as well. Any questions? So if in terms of partnering, I know mm -hmm. it depends on the type of um, contract that it is, but mm -hmm. in general, uh, prior to partnering and gaining the experience and knowledge or coaching, uh, is there a fee for that or associated with that? Well, we have, we currently have, um, we, uh, our contracts and grants online and, and Allie's going to send you all of these links, uh, contracts and grants online is our coaching portal. That's where we do our free, um, uh, sessions to our members. And, you know, you just join so that you get noticed of them and we do various workshops and some of them are already up there, um, because we record all of them and some of them are, are a lot of them in terms of finding opportunities, how to vet opportunities, those things are up there. But we do also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, and we also have the Fast Track class, which is a class that is either self-paced, do it at your own time, and then you schedule custom one-on-one -on -one training, or you go through it with a class. And we have a variety of prices for that based on where you are and the type of service that you're offering. Because some, some services are more uh, complex than others. So the course is designed around the complexity, which may not be something that you would be required to know. Um, okay. And in case, in this case, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of quotes. But yes, our entire environment, uh, the contracts and grants online, will give you the information that you need about our courses and our events. So uh, another question is, uh, I have prior military experience as a mm -hmm. veteran. And so... Um, and I, I've seen or I've you know, read previously how they have um, veteran con contracts specifically for they veterans. They do. They have set-aside contracts uh, for veterans. In fact, when you, <coughs> register, uh, when you register or after you register in SAM, you're going to go over to VETBIZ, V-E-T-B-I-Z, mm -hmm. and that is where you're going to register as a veteran. And that's where people go to find veterans. And that's where the government goes to verify that you are a veteran. So it's a verification process that you go through. I think you upload your DD-214 and some other things. And then once you do and you fill out your, you know, your SAM, because there's a place in, when you register in SAM, there is a place there for you to indicate that you're a woman-owned business, veteran-owned business, and whatever, whatever whatever other designations that you are. 
Now, do you assist at all with getting those de designations such as woman-owned business or are they, is, are they all simple processes? At this point, they are all self-certifying. Now, the service disabled vet one, um, it is a little, com well, it's no different than a woman-owned, but yes, we have classes on. Uh, once you've done one certification, they're pretty much the same. They ask for the same information. They ask, you know, for your company information and some of your personal information. But yes, we do uh, have classes and courses and we also consult one-on-one uh, -on -one with companies as well. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? Oh, okay, ladies, well, we will be sending out a follow-up to this workshop uh, to kind of ask and answer any questions that you may have had once you start looking at the opportunities and going after and then bidding them or if you're finding some common you know, some common information or things or struggles that you're having, please feel free to shoot me an email. If you just need to, you know, to jump on a call real quick and ask me some questions, I'll be glad, more than happy to go over that with you. In the meantime, we thank you so much for your time. I hope it's been helpful and I hope to see you on other workshops. Thank you so much. Thank you and have a great day. Thank My condolences to you, you and your too. family for your loss. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.